Good morning, everyone. Uh, the Mackinac Bridge Authority will officially be called to order now. Today's date is April 5th, 2024. Uh, Kim, if you could call the roll, please, I'd greatly appreciate it. Chairman Here. Here. Member Cheeseman? Here. Member Kinley? Here. Member Steidel? <coughs> Here. Unchanged. Un and uh, Council Grayson? Here. Thank you. Uh, just for the record, it was duly noted that uh, Member Steidel is on uh, virtual uh, joining us. Unfortunately, he couldn't make the meeting due to uh, travel restriction uh, with the airports. But it's good to see you, Kurt, and uh, we look forward to your input as always. Okay, we have the agenda in front of us. Uh, which you wishes? Is there any additions, corrections, or be adopted as presented? I move approval of the agenda. I move approval of the agenda. Is there support to the motion? Support. It's been moved and supported that the agenda be approved as presented. <laughs> Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, under two, anybody from the public uh, wishing to address the Mackinac Bridge Authority? Uh, we understand that we have a special guest with us today that would like to make a presentation to the board. Yes, I'd just like to introduce our um, special guest this morning, Brendan Fisher. If you look in your packet, you have a press release that was done in uh, December of 22 about some exciting things, bringing parts of our bridge grading to the South Pole. And so you learn about Brendan in that news article and he can tell you what he's been up to since then. So I'll turn it over to Brendan Fisher and his friend Hans. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. And what an achievement. Yeah, it was a, a great experience down there. It, uh, and I didn't, uh, how do I say, know what to expect. I, uh, I, in the press release, I bought the section of the bridge in 2020 and uh, just was making neat things out of it. And I thought that'd be a nice item to leave down there, the signpost. Uh, so, you familiar? No. Oh, there, there we go. go. Okay. Uh, so that's me on the left. Uh, Hans here took the picture. Uh, on, on top of the main picture now, the guy on the right is Troy from uh, Traverse City. <laughs> He's actually down there now, I believe. Um, so I was just going to talk about the different things we've made out of it, and then what we did down at the pole with it too. So oh. here's the station. Yeah, so the, this is an overview of the station. Um, you can see the station clearly on the right. Uh, there are two pole markers at the South Pole. One is called the ceremonial pole. It's kind of nice pictures. That's that little star on the left. And then, um, oh, our star's moved. But the star in the center at the top is where the geographical marker is. So the the station is on an ice sheet that's about 9,000 feet thick, and it moves <laughs> it moves about 10 meters a year. Um, so the actual location of the bottom of the Earth moves relative to the ice, I guess, and that's uh, at, towards the top. So there are two markers. You can see the picture at the bottom left is, is the ceremonial pole, and then the picture at the bottom right is the geographical pole, pole, geographical pole oh. marker. And there's Mackinac Bridge in both of them now. <laughs> uh, we're going to break down what we did on both of them. Uh, so, and I've also got a, I'm going to leave a gift for the pole. I'll get that. Uh, This well, is this good? Um, so I, I've taken multiple pieces down besides the, the, the long signpost. So this piece here 
is the significance is the hole, actually. The hole that's missing, the piece that's missing, is holding up the ceremonial pole marker. Wow. And that's all left in this book, too, of the making of it. Um, so I'm leaving this with the bridge authority. Uh, let's go to the next slide. So this, let's get in the ceremonial pole, the piece. We'll get to that. It's in the slide. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah. So we're starting. So this is the geographical pole marker here in the making of it. The top right picture is right. the pole. The geographical pole marker has its ceremony, so it gets replaced every year with a new one. January first. Yeah, every every January first, there's a little ceremony, and they put in a new one. So this one is there currently, and it will be replaced again next January. And when it gets replaced, there's a uh, cabinets. Yeah, display, there's a display cabinets. Display cabinets where it'll be placed for, um, this is where we'll say for an optional number of years till the cabinet gets full. And I think I put in the book that what's neat about when it gets retired from the cabinet, let's say 20, 30 years, is it goes to Smithsonian, the end of eternity. So the, on this picture here, uh, the top right is three quarter round bar from the bridge. And you can see a couple of flat pieces in the picture also. That's me handing the, the round bar to our machinist, uh, Cal. And then you can still see the round bar in the top left as he's getting ready. And that's after he took four pieces out of it, four wafers, three quarter inch. And then the bottom left picture, you can see four pieces of the bridge that are integrated into the bottom right picture. Did I say it good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, and then the middle picture is the end result. It just came out beautiful. Uh, so now we're at the ceremonial pole marker and you can see the bottom left picture is the one that's in the, um, the uh, display here, here. And the little piece uh, in the bottom left picture that you can see the hole that I'd cut out of it. And it's grafted onto the tube in the bottom right picture. Top right is the tube getting ready to assemble the ceremonial pole marker. And that's Luke, another one of our winter overs that uh, is getting ready to install it for the first time. I thought we had another picture. No, oh, okay. well, later. OK, later. later. Yeah. Uh, so I had more steel down there. And I just had, was having fun with it. Uh, so the top right picture is a big piece of oak that we used to make our picture frame for our winter rover crew, which is in the middle. Let's and back up. Uh, so every, every year, the, the crew that spent the winter there takes a winter over picture. And there's a, there's a, in the main hallway, there's a, a line of them. Uh, they go all the way back to the 50s when, when the U.S. started it. So every, every year, they put up a new picture. And then more recently, every crew builds their own frame. And this was our addition. So the top right is Hans. We're grafting or uh, harvesting the, pick, the pieces out of the oak to make that center picture frame. And the bridge, uh, you can see my hand on the left there. I made those bolts out of the bridge that are holding the corners of the picture frame together. You can see the top left, I'm machining them. Uh, there's the thing. Yeah. I think we got a picture of all those hanging. Yeah. So it's here's the uh, geographical one in its glory. So you can't see on this one, well, you can't see neither, but the, the, the bridge pieces are in there until uh, yeah. January 1st, 25. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're kind of in the middle of yeah. it. Yeah. So here's, uh, so we came back to the ceremonial one. Um, so the picture, or this piece that's here in the box is sitting there, it's unpainted in the picture. Um, that's the same piece that's in the box. And this green, just by a side note, is the official paint code of the bridge. <laughs> so there's a place that mixes it up for me. And then the two right pictures are uh, Luke and I that made the piece. Here's oh, in the top right one. You can see what Hans is talking about, the, the line of uh, the winter over pictures. It, that came out really nice. Yeah, I think that's the last slide. Is it? OK. Oh, and this one, I just wanted to show another thing I made from the bridge. Um, I just finished that. And uh, it just came out really nice. It's just a table, suspension table. 
yeah. That's Suspen a, suspension bridge parts making a suspension. suspension yeah, yeah, suspension bridge parts making the suspension <laughs> table. <Yeah. laughs> the only thing, it's uh, not bridge steel there, the cables, and then the glass top. Beautiful work. Yeah. Gorgeous work. Cool. And I did, I just finished that, so I don't have any great pictures of it. But had to do a sheet background and stuff, so I apologize for that. We've had really rough weather at home lately, South Bend. So, I live about a mile south of the border. So, how do we do? Any well, you, you did very good. Uh, before I, I'm going to give the uh, authority members here an opportunity to comment or ask any questions. Sure. But uh, before you're completely excused, I, I would like to do a group photo of the Mackinac Bridge Authority, you making a presentation of oh, that that'd beautiful be great. That'd be fun. Okay. And uh, I think the term was winter over? Winter over. So Yeah. So maybe we could be part of that winter over picture in oh, the South be Pole. <laughs> <laughs> We're extensively tested for that uh, winter over, <laughs> physically and mentally everything. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's nine months of isolation. Yeah. Yeah. So, with 9,000 feet of ice. 9,000, yeah. Wow. We're 9,300 feet, that's another, it's a little known that it's 9,300 feet high. And then the, um, what's the, not density altitude. Physio the, altitude. Physio altitude was significantly higher than that a lot of times. Uh, that's, a, that's a third of the distance of the Mackinac Bridge, so that tells oh, you yeah. how thick that yeah. ice is. <laughs> Would you share with us some of your background and how you got associated with the South Pole? Um, so, uh, I was doing a boat trip called the Great Loop, and um, it's a year-long boat trip. I left from uh, St. Joe, Michigan, and you go down the river system. Well, this was like day number two for me. It was uh, day number, number one was just going across Lake Michigan to Chicago. Day number two, you enter the river system. You boat all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico, and then uh, I kept it true and went all the way around Key West, came up the East Coast. At New York, you enter into the Hudson, and you hit the Erie Canal. Uh, I went, came home up through Canada, so I went across at a diagonal across Lake, Lake Ontario, and uh, did the Trent Southern Waterway in Canada, checked back into American Customs at Drummond Island. <laughs> and then uh, a couple days later, crossed another the bridge, um, spent a little time in Traverse City, came down the coast, and uh, when you get back to the marina you start from, it's called crossing your wake. And uh, so anyway, during that trip, I think I got a little long-winded on that one. Uh, during that trip, I just wanted to do something different uh, as far as work goes um, when I was done with it. So during it, I just started looking into the Antarctic program. And uh, with the resume and everything, it was fairly straightforward uh, getting the trip down there. What was your role? Uh, heavy equipment mechanic, welder down there. Um, <clears throat> Did I get everything? Is that? Yeah. Okay. That's it. Right. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Long winded answer. Sorry. <laughs> Any other comments, questions before we take our picture? Well, oh, I'm sorry, Barbara. No, I just want to say thank you. I mean, it's yeah. actually gorgeous work. It's a fantastic uh, recognition to the bridge and for what you do and the whole team down there. Just thank you. I think it's absolutely yeah. fantastic. It came out really nice. You're very it? talented. <laughs> Okay, if we could just uh, take a group photo with the presentation, it'd be wonderful. I think that's the one reason we'd like to see yeah, over there. Right up here on the screen, Kim, uh, oh, Mike. Can we take one? Yeah, take that. Yeah, <clears throat>
Thank you again. <coughs> okay, uh, number three. Oh, I'm sorry, anybody else from the public wishing to address the Mackinac Bridge Authority? Please step forward to the. Sorry. No. Sorry. Take your time. I apologize. I just would like to introduce myself. You haven't had the fortunate experience to put up with me for very long. <laughs> but actually, my family came to the U.S. in 1842 through Ellis Island from England. They eventually made their way. They got married in Batavia, New York, Fred and Molly, made their way up to Michigan and received a Michigan Swamp Land Grant for 80 acres, which is actually the corner of Stoll Road and Old 27, the northeast corner. So I live in Potterville. I'm a retired state employee. I have pictures of my family waiting to cross that bridge and waiting for it to be built and prior using the ferry. So I just wanted to come here today. I don't represent anybody, but I would like to actively start back into attending meetings and seeing what's going on. So I, my name is Penny Ruff. I live at 4511 Pinch Highway, Potterville. Thank you. Well, thank you, first of all, that uh, your service to the state of Michigan to begin with. You said you were a retired state employee. We want to thank you for that. And we want to thank you for the interest in, that you have in the Mackinac Bridge, as well as your interest in government in general. That's what I took out of your statement. Thank you very much for your thank kind you. words. Anybody else from the public wishing to address the Mackinac Bridge Authority? One more time, anybody else? Thank you very much. Uh, we'll move on to item three. This is an action item. Uh, we have minutes of the November 2nd Finance Committee meeting. We have minutes of the November 3rd official Mackinac Bridge Authority meeting. And we have uh, minutes of a closed session uh, that took place on November 3rd as well. Uh, if there's no uh, additions or corrections, a motion to accept all three would be in order. Mr. Chairman, we amended the Finance Committee meeting agenda yesterday uh, when uh, Director Weiferk stood up to give us a financial briefing on Michigan Department of Transportation. Okay. Is there approval, a motion to approve the minutes of these three meetings? I'll make that motion. Is there support to the motion? Support. It's been moved and duly supported that the minutes of all three meetings be approved with no corrections or deletions. Um, is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Old business, project update. It's always a pleasure to hear from our Chief Engineer, good morning, Cole. Good morning. Um, first, I just want to thank Brendan Fisher for that. That was uh, pretty amazing to hear about. And also, if you're ever looking for your next adventure, we're always looking for good welders at the bridge. So <laughs> keep that in mind, maybe. Um, so this is going to be uh, the final project update for uh, Mackinac Bridge Project M00238, uh, also what we call the North Viaduct Project. So as a reminder, the North Viaduct is the portion of the bridge that is located above the, the causeway on the north side of the bridge. So if you recall, the main goal of that project was to replace uh, old joints in the North Viaduct. So all told, we replaced uh, three expansion joints. Um, so these were the, they were originally these sliding plate joints on the left here. Uh, we replaced them with um, more modern uh, strip seal uh, joints that, again, do a better job of keeping water out of the deck and from below the bearings, as well as we replaced 11 relief joints. Um, so this was a, a bigger update uh, as a new design. You can see the old 
relief joints actually exposed, they created a joint in the pavement and they had these armor angles. Um, the new joint, it is there, but it actually was designed to be paved over. So eventually it, essentially it helps keep water out of the deck a little bit better. Um, so we have 11 of those and right now you can see that it is gapped out, but eventually with our next project, this will be paved over and you won't even see those joints from, from the roadway. It's not working. Okay, now it is. So, uh, so I say this will be the final project update because it was completed on November 3rd of last year. Um, the original contracted amount was about $4.98 million. Uh, it came down to a little bit lower than that. Uh, the final amount was about $4.7 million. Uh, the bulk of that savings um, was actually working with the prime contractor. Uh, to, so to construct these joints, we originally thought we needed to do the work um, in part with. So essentially by shutting down half of the bridge and replacing half of the joint and then coming in and doing the other half. Um, but we worked with the prime contractor Anlon on this project to do it part with. So essentially what they did was um, instead we made the construction zone be the two interior lanes. As they worked on those, traffic was able to keep flowing uh, both north and south in the outside lanes. After they completed that section, the construction zone then flipped to the outside lanes. Again, traffic was able to keep flowing in both directions. And eventually, uh, they completed the joint and opened it back up to traffic. So this picture in the bottom right, you can actually see this is in, in between the, the switch. So you can see the new joint here in the, did I do that? Sorry about that. Okay, so you can see the new joint there on the inside lane and the, the old joint next to it in the outside lane. So that was before it was completed. Um, <coughs> but again, overall, it was a successful project. We accomplished uh, what was we set out to do, uh, which is replace those old joints and um, yeah, move on to this, this next stage of our next project. So any final questions on that project? So that brings us to uh, Project M00239, which uh, we've been calling the Deck Rehabilitation Project. So uh, this project, um, bids were received on November 3rd, just worked out that it, we completed the North Viaduct on the same day bids were received. Um, this project was designed by a, a team from Parsons. Um, the Mackinac Bridge authorities retained uh, Roe um, for doing construction engineering and inspection. Um, Zenith Tech uh, was selected as the prime contractor on the project uh, with their various subcontractors. So the scope of this work is essentially uh, resurfacing and deck rehabilitation to the north viaduct and the approach truss spans. Uh, so it's about 2.1 miles of the bridge that will be completely resurfaced uh, over the next two years. So um, as well as resurfacing, we'll be uh, going in and rehabbing the rest of the joints that haven't been replaced, as well as there's one more joint in the North Viaduct that we, we plan to replace at Pier 34. So uh, unfortunately with paving, uh, there was no way around the, the, the part with our uh, work. Um, so in order to help mitigate construction as well as keep traffic flowing, uh, we, the, the work is planned to be in two stages. Uh, so stage one did begin uh, last Friday, where we have closed off the northbound lanes of the bridge and con construction is taking place actively right now in those northbound lanes, while traffic has been moved over to the southbound lanes, one lane in each direction, southbound and northbound, so that we can keep traffic flowing, um, as well as the project is planned to be reopened to traffic uh, and the paving done on May 23rd. So that's right before Memorial Day weekend when, when we start seeing traffic increase. Um, 
stage two, which will be swapping the traffic in the construction zone. So the construction will be in the, the northbound lanes and traffic will be moved, or construction will be in the southbound lanes and traffic will be moved to the northbound lanes. Um, and that'll happen next spring again when traffic is lower and when we're able to get in and, and do this work. Just out of curiosity, uh, yep. looking back to the, the south, how, how far back is that where you cross over into so, the southbound lane going north? So the south, so the crossovers are located in Mackinac City, northbound. Oh, before you get on yeah, the Yeah, so bridge. before you get on the bridge okay. and, and right below the tolls, southbound. And the reason for that is there's no space um, to be able to do the crossover once you right. get on the that, bridge. That's why I yeah. asked the question. I couldn't so even it. though the work is primarily located uh, in the truss spans as well as the north viaduct, there is no alternative but to, to switch the traffic over for the, the full oh, length wait. of the bridge. Now, uh, phase two, that is still the same bid proposal or the accepted bid that we signed? With. Yep, so this is all one contract, so it's a two-year contract. Um, so it'll be the same contractor. Um, we're hoping uh, everything goes well this year so that next year we'll be, be ready to go uh, for those other lanes. Thank you. So uh, the question will come up, you know, why are we doing this? Uh, it's, it is for a very important reason, and uh, it's all about protecting the deck of the Mackinac Bridge. So in recent years, uh, we have, even though the deck overall is in very good condition, we have had to start doing more patching on the deck. Um, you can see here, this is a picture I actually just took Monday. Uh, you can see the patches that we've put in place. And if you look on the picture on the right, or on the left, um, the deck is dry, but you can see there's a little bit of moisture along the edges. And essentially, every time we put a patch in, it creates weaknesses uh, in that asphalt layer that lets water get in and infiltrate down to the deck. So um, you can see in the picture on the right, there's a patch, and then we had to come in and put another patch right next to it. Um, and this is fairly well known in bridges with overlays because you do create a weakness in that protective asphalt layer whenever you have to do a patch. Um, there's something called the halo effect where you start getting needing patches <coughs> around a patch as water infiltrates and gets in. And we really want to slow that down. So that's the, the main goal of this project. So um, here are just some costs for the project and, and why it's important. So you can see the project the cost of M00238, which was that North Viaduct project, was about 4.7 million. The, the cost for uh, this deck rehabilitation project is about nine and a half million. And you know, that's a lot of money, but I wanted to bring your attention back to the, the eventual deck replacement. And you'll see the North Viaduct deck replacement is about 18 million, and that's you know, estimated now, um, as well as the approach deck, deck replacement is 221 million. So if we're able, the, the longer we can protect the deck and extend that life, it gives us more time to save up uh, and get prepared for that eventual deck replacement. Um, down here, uh, it's kind of hard to see on the presentation, but it just shows what the estimated service life of the, br the bridge would be without repaving and with repaving. And uh, oops, sorry. Um, it, it basically, it shows that by doing these projects now, we're able to put off that deck replacement um, longer and again, to keep uh, saving up money and getting ready for the deck replacement. Um, and that's... That's a very, very important, important point right yeah. there. The longevity of the bridge is uh, way out to where it's saving you, what, $221 million. Yeah. So yeah, so the... Good job. It's an important part of the, the maintenance and... and Definitely the big part of what the Mackinac Bridge Authority is, is, is meant to do. So uh, we're hoping for a successful project. Any questions? So this uh, chairman is actually um, the setup. So this was from the last construction zone, but um, this shows the northbound crossover in Mackinac City. It's, it's similar to what we have now. Any questions of our engineer with his first report, Trish? 
Thanks. <clears throat> Thanks, Cole, as always. Fantastic work. Oh, thank you. Always. So um, I actually have a question that's not exactly related to the Mackinac Bridge, but it is in that, and, and maybe this is a question better um, directed towards the director. Yesterday in the finance meeting, when he gave his uh, MDOT update, or it gave us an overview of all the projects and uh, construction going on, I recall, I think, that he said there is a project planned on 75 going northbound. Is that, mm. and I, I do, does somebody remember when and where that um, is? I'm just kind of just uh, thinking about our season and. Yeah, yeah. yeah so there are uh, a few projects on I-75 within an area of the bridge. Um, most of the ones northbound are, are further enough, are far enough south that traffic should be able to kind of recover before they get to the bridge, um, but, but there will be impacts. There's a couple bridge replacements um, going on on I-75 uh, towards Gaylord, as well as a, a repaving project that, if you recall a couple years ago, we had a paving project just south of the bridge in Mackinac City, mm -hmm. and that did impact our traffic. Um, this one is now the next stage of that, so it, it is far further away. Um, anticipating a much uh, lower impact on our traffic with that project. Um, the other project that is going on on I-75 is actually just north of the bridge. Um, it was going on last season as well. So this involves the US-2 overpass of I-75 just north of the tolls. That project is kicking off again actually this week. That will likely impact our southbound traffic a little bit. Um, I believe the plan is to also stop construction after Memorial Day through the summer and then pick back up again after Labor Day. So we're, we're anticipating no work, outside work, we'll be doing our maintenance work, but uh, construction work in the area of the bridge by outside contractors for most of the summer. Um, another thing about this project is by repaving and putting that new protective layer on, it should reduce the amount of patching we're doing internally, which does cause overnight closures on the bridge. Um, so we should start seeing less of those as well. So again, impacting the travelers less and, and keeping the bridge open as much as we can. Yeah, okay, thank you. Because that the, the southbound issue from last summer is exactly why I asked. Because yeah. that got pretty messy yeah. real quick. and. And, and we're working, uh, we work you. pretty closely with MDOT um, on that project. They, they keep us informed of what's going on. Uh, we try to attend their progress meetings and uh, they have some restrictions on their traffic, same as we do um, with our project uh, and we try to coordinate those and time those. So it's been a, a good relationship. Uh, it's just the, the nature of construction. Thank you, thank you, Trish. Go ahead. On that, the state project on that overpass just yep. north, of, north of the bridge, do you know when they stop working on it? Will both lanes be open, westbound and northbound on 75? I'd have to verify. Um, I, I believe similar to last year, they will try to open up traffic again. I think they're gonna, I, I guess I shouldn't speak on it until I know for sure, but I can, I can get follow up with you on that. Do you know when that project is scheduled to be complete? It is scheduled to be complete this year, okay. um, but in the fall. Okay, thank yeah. you. Any other questions of Cole under the project updates? Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Kurt. Hey, thanks, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> hey, uh, Cole, great job. Mm -hmm. um, it, I just want to uh, thank the, the whole maintenance staff. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you'll remember one of our first meetings where you and I were at where we were talking about that uh, viaduct replacement, the yeah. center span was all going to have to happen by 2018, yeah. which is six years ago. <laughs> uh, and now we're talking about 2037 if we do nothing. So that just <sighs> speaks volumes to the preventative maintenance the, that uh, the whole team is doing there, all these project works, all the works that the, the staff is doing, uh, and my hat's off to all of you. You've, you've saved 
the motorist a tremendous amount of money by doing it and frankly you've given the authority to be able to build up our cash reserves so that when we get there we can actually pay for it. That same meeting in the early 2000s I think we had what maybe a million dollars in a bank? Not much more than that. It was less than five. (laughs) (laughs) There wasn't much Um, and uh, it's completely different scenario sitting in the finance meeting now than it was then. So I just wanted to say uh, thanks to, to Cole, Kim in, in your prior role, uh, and then all the staff for all the great things you're doing. You, you've done a tremendous job. Thank well, you, Kurt. Yeah. Well said. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much, uh, Member Steidel. And uh, I know s- some of the maintenance staff are, are tuning into the meeting, but I will pass it along when I get back as well because um, it is pretty uh, amazing what uh, we're able to to accomplish internally and it does save the authority a lot of money and uh, keeps the bridge in working order so uh, we're very uh, proud of them as well thank you any other questions under project updates if not Cole, while you have the podium you want to move right into the annual inspection report yep so um on that note uh, we did have our annual inspection um in 2023 uh this year's inspection was performed by HDR. So this was actually their second year uh, performing the annual inspection for us. Um, they were on site from July 17th to August 4th. Um, it, it's, it's a very large structure. So um, it takes, you know, that's, that's a, a typical time frame, about three weeks to, to look at everything. Um, and the good news is the bridge, overall, the, the bridge is in, in good condition. Uh, and that was the, the findings. Um, Another good note on this year's inspection, um, the past few inspections, we've, we've had some priority type of maintenance findings. We actually didn't have any uh, in this year's inspection, so um, it means that we're, we're doing a good job and our maintenance department is uh, keep, keeping up um, as the bridge ages. Uh, one thing we did differently this year uh, with HDR is uh, we had them do a non-redundant steel tension member uh, inspection. Uh, formerly, this was called a fracture critical inspection. Um, it's not new. Uh, we just usually alternate years. Um, as the, the board knows, we've been alternating our inspection teams each year to get different eyes on the bridge. Um, and the way it worked with our NSTM inspections, it just happened to be the same team doing it because we alternated. So. Uh, this was kind of a supplementary, supplementary uh, check on that. Um, and what it is, is essentially it calls for a 100% hands-on inspection of members identified as being non-redundant steel tension members, uh, such as gusset plates. Um, so it, it, it really calls for getting up close and personal uh, with each of these members within hands reach to do a, a very thorough inspection. And the good news there, again, was there were no new, no new findings, um, and, and they were in good shape. So uh, it was a good check on our NSTM inspections, and uh, the results were good. So uh, we were very pleased with that. Um, the annual inspection is, is a big undertaking with the bridge, um, and I just wanted to, to note uh, the picture here on the left is actually three of our maintenance staff um, assisting three HDR inspectors. So the three HDR inspectors, again, getting up close and personal with the bridge are, are noted at the top of the ladders there uh, as our maintenance staff help assist uh, them with the ladders as well as maneuvering uh, our traveler underneath the bridge. Um, and it, it, it takes a lot of effort on our end to assist, but you know, providing access and assisting with the inspectors, and they're always grateful for that. But um, another partnership I wanted to, to bring out was uh, in the right photo, these are two HDR inspectors with um, the MDOT statewide reach all crew. So they come out every year to help us with our inspection. I believe that is uh, Jason Barnhart in the bucket there with the inspectors. Um, and we always appreciate them coming up to assist us with this uh, inspection. And that, that really helps give us a lot more access that we wouldn't have without them coming to help us. So moving forward, um, this, we are approaching the last year of our current inspection contract. So the last inspection cycle uh, was the team of HDR and Parsons. Um, 
So HDR performed the inspection in 21, Parsons in 22, HDR in 23, and now it will be Parsons again in 24. Um, we are going to start putting together a new proposal to get a new contract in place. Um, so we are, we're not sure quite who's going to be in 2025, but uh, we all will be working on that. Um, we've talked internally about how we want to set it up. It'll, it'll likely be similar where we have two teams. Um, but we've talked about there might be benefits to rather than alternating every year to try to maybe do two consecutive years just to get some more consistency. Um, but that's yet to be determined and, and we'll keep the board informed on any, any changes, but uh, we will be putting that together uh, in the coming months. Um, the other thing I wanted to note is FHWA is coming out with new, uh, not necessarily changing how bridge inspections are done, but how they're reported. So they've come out with new standards um, that are going to be required to be reported uh, in 2025, 2026. So our next couple inspections are gonna, we're gonna start that change uh, and include it and have our inspection team start looking at that. And uh, basically, like I said, it's not changing a whole lot, just how things are reported. Um, but they've, they've come up with a few new classifications and things. So uh, there will be some changes, but um, we're gonna try to get ahead of it. And of course, we'll comply with uh, what FHWA uh, deems necessary, so. Any other questions on the annual inspection report? Go ahead. Cole, when, when HDR came on site for their inspection, did they bring any engineers from 21 that had had prior experience on the bridge? Or they, they, is this a brand new learning curve when a team comes in? Um, it, it, is a, it is a learning curve um, because the bridge is so large. Um, when a brand new team comes, um, and we kind of take that into account that the first year a new consultant team is going to be there, they're going to have to you know, get familiar with access. One thing we've been working on, uh, both internally as well as with our consultant teams, is putting together a access plan that the MBA will then own and have handy to provide our inspection teams as well as any new inspection teams in the future that just go over things like we access the bent pier this way we utilize ladders for this. We utilize a lift for this. Um, just so when a new team comes in, we try to bridge that learning curve a little bit. Um, HDR did have the same uh, project manager and lead inspector, as well as um, some repeat uh, inspectors from 2021. So, How big uh, is the team? How many people? Typically, there's about anywhere between six to 10 each week. Uh, so usually there's a, a, at least three teams located on the bridge during the inspection, uh, looking at different things. So there might be a team in the tower, uh, a team in the reach all with, with MDOT, and a team on the traveler with, with our crew, um, kind of divide and conquer. So it is, it's definitely a, a big effort, uh, and an important effort to make sure that we're we do build our maintenance program off of that annual inspection, so we need to know where, where we have to target and what we need to take care of, so. Thank you. I have just a couple points. Yep. Number one, do I love this format? Oh, yeah. It, it, yeah. it saves you about four hours just trying to figure out where the <laughs> is. Yep. But at any rate, it's always a pleasure when you're talking about our maintenance staff, that when I always go right to the recommendations and look at the priorities. And mm -hmm. it's always really a good feeling that when you look at priority one, there's nothing there. Yeah. I, and then you look at priority two, and it's pretty minimal mm -hmm. considered five miles of a superstructure bridge like that. There again, as everybody's pointed out, it's directly related to our maintenance people. Mm -hmm. So at any rate, are there any other questions under the annual report for Cole? Okay, you get one more. <laughs> pretty lucky today. Yeah. Or was that Kim? No, nope, no, nope, that one's Kim. So okay, I appreciate apologize. It. Thank yep. you, Cole. Yep, thank you. And uh, tell, uh, Matthew, we said hello. I will. Yeah. Hello. 
Um, Morning, Kim. Uh, let's see here. This item is about the crane elision. We've reported on this several times. So you can remember that about, it's almost a year ago now, um, we had a crane that was being towed on a barge hit the underside of the center span of the bridge, um, doing a little bit of damage to the bridge. Um, and we um, did some inspections. We hired a non-destructive testing firm. We got repair recommendations from Parsons, who also did the inspections. We did the repair work with our own employees. And that's what you see on the screen here. You'll see in the upper left is the, the raw condition after the impact. This is just one area that was impacted. Um, we did a little intermediate repair work coating that because we knew it would take a while for the inspection. We didn't want all the rust to form. And then the picture on the right is the finished condition. You can see the scaffolding next to the um, the the member there where we uh, took out some rivets that were uh, damaged and replaced, uh, ground out the gouges and then put a new coating on there. Um, and you can see in your packet, uh, just a summary of the repair costs that uh, Cole and Matthew put together for us. They kept track of, of all the time and materials and the um, rental rate from the Blue Water Bridge equipment that came up and helped us and Parsons and the non-destructive testing firm. So um, also in your packet is a claim letter that you remember our, um, our AG representative, Phil Bladen, put together and sent out uh, March 4th. So that's relatively new. And I'm gonna pass it off to Phil now to tell you what's been happening since this letter went out. Good morning. Good morning, Phil. Uh, nice to see you all in person. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, as you obviously see that uh, we sent out our damage claim notification and letter to the responsible parties on March the 4th. This was after the uh, Coast Guard completed their report. Uh, we kind of needed that in order to be able to establish formally the level of fault and so forth and also identify the correct parties to send the, the, uh, the notice to. Uh, I've been recently in contact with the attorney for basic towing who was the owner of the barge uh, that was towing uh, in, in the vessel that was towing the crane. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, I'm happy to report that uh, it seems, and there's, this is obviously contingent upon f getting a final settlement offer or offer to resolve the claim, but it, my impression from discussing it with counsel was that they're going to probably pay the entire amount of our damages, um, and they just asked for a couple weeks to uh, conf you know, finalize that and also prepare a release. Um, uh, again, this is contingent on getting the formal offer to pay everything, um, but I, I believe it's uh, uh, very likely and I'm hopeful for that. Um, and uh, I also want to actually praise the, the, the maintenance crew, take this opportunity, because I think that had a con contributing effect to helping us get this potentially resolved fairly quickly without a lot of uh, contention, because them doing the work internally saved quite a bit of money, and I think that the keeping those costs down probably contributed to the uh, the uh, the decision again contingent uh, to pay the claim without any um, argument uh, with, on their part. And I think hopefully I made a little bit of persuasive argument for them too. Uh, I said this is you know the most important piece of infrastructure in the state of Michigan, so. Uh, they they understood what we were making the point, but um, um, I'm hopeful that we can get this resolved finally before the the anniversary of the impact, which was on March or May the fourth <coughs> of last year. But again, this is all contingent on getting the formal offer. But uh, I'm hopeful for that, and I'm happy to take any questions from anybody. Thank you, and thank you for all the work you've done. And helping us to make sure that we get the claims properly filed. And so, thank you. Are there any questions of the members of the authority? 
Thank you very much. You've spent a lot of time on this. We certainly appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Kim? All right. We'll move on to our legislative update. And you can see when you look this bill, Senate Bill 21, up online, you can see there hasn't been any, there doesn't show any movement since uh, January of 2023. Um, but that doesn't mean things aren't going on in the background. So um, this bill, uh, also included in your packet, is one of the draft substitutes. And um, Senator DeMoose and Troy Hagan and ourselves have been talking about this uh, pretty much continuously since it was introduced and trying to polish it up and make it better so that it can succeed. And we are working on that. and. If once we get a draft the way we like it, it'll be presented to the chair of the State Transportation Committee and we'll request that it go to, for a hearing and we'll continue to work with the sponsor of the bill who is Senator DeMoose, um, who we appreciate all his efforts towards this. So there's more to come on this and we're continuously working on it, trying to make it, make it better and, and get it through, so. Thank you, any questions to Jim? Very good, excellent report, thank you. At this point in time, we have some security measures that we have to discuss. So a motion would be in order to uh, close the public meeting and adjourn a public meeting for the purpose to enter into a uh, secured session, or closed session, I should say. I move that we adjourn the public meeting and go into closed session. Is there support to that motion? I support that motion. Okay, there's no discussion on that. Uh, all in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye, aye as well, and I uh, have the record note that it's uh, 9.57, that the public uh, meeting has been closed for a minute. We'll take a couple minutes uh, to recess. 9.52, I said 9.57, I'm sorry. I like somebody that's actually listening to me. <laughs>
Okay, uh, good morning. Uh, we're returning from the closed session. A motion to uh, uh, re enter, reconvene the public session would be in order right now. I so move that we reconvene, that we reconvene the public session. It's been moved and supported. Uh, it's 11.02. I'll support that. Thank you. All in favor of reconvening the public meeting, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Member Milliken, would you be kind enough to give the financial committee report from yesterday? I would be happy <coughs> to. The, the finance committee met uh, yesterday afternoon. Uh, worked its way through a number of agenda items. Um, Plant Moran con uh, conducted an audit of the uh, 2023 fiscal year, and partner in charge Gene Young uh, was uh, with us to present uh, the findings from the report. And we were pleased to uh, uh, be notified that they were uh, giving us an unmodified opinion uh, for the performance of the Bridge Authority last year. Um, we had uh, operating revenues uh, during the course of the fiscal year of $23,683,000. Um, traffic crossings on the bridge throughout the year totaled 4,396,000 vehicles. Uh, that was an increase of 3.6% from the prior year. And our gross toll revenue increased by $45,000 or uh, up two tenths of a percent from the the prior year. Um, it was also noted that uh, expenses to preserve and maintain the bridge, related to infrastructure, uh, totaled eight million four hundred and seventy-five thousand um, dollars. Traffic report of. For your information, I'll give you a quick breakdown on some of the crossings. 68% uh, were autos crossing the bridge. Commuters were 17%. Autos with trailers were 8% of the total traffic. RVs, uh, about 1%, and trucks were 6%. So that's the way the traffic on the bridge uh, breaks out. We also got an update on the negotiations with the um, Michigan State Police for the renewal of their lease on the St. Ignace Post. Those are progressing. We've made good headway, and we hope that uh, within a month we'll have some resolution to that. And that concludes my report. Are there any questions? No, thank you very much. Very thorough. Uh, the uh, request would be a, a motion to accept your report would be in order. May I make that motion? I would be offended if I, you didn't. I move that that, <laughs> that report be accepted by the Mackinac Bridge Authority. I Is there support to the motion? I support that motion. Thank you. Is there any discussion on the motion? Uh, considering it's a financial matter, Kim, would you call roll, please, on that? Chairman Gleason? Yes. Vice Chair Milliken? Yes. Member Ahrens? Yes. Member Cheeseman? Yes. Member Yes. Thank you. Motion carried. Uh, I'm assuming it's Mike for the special events report. Well, welcome back, everybody. Um, a little lighter subject to talk about. Um, we're going to talk about the 2024 special events and crossings. Um, a lot of these are reoccurring events that take place annually. Um, it looks like we have um, eight scheduled for this year. Uh, two have been approved at this time. Uh, six are still pending. Um, starting with uh, our very first event, which typically is May 10th, uh, it's called Jeep the Mac. Uh, due to our project on the bridge, we didn't participate this year. Um, I'm sure that'll be uh, brought back in the future. Uh, so our first event on June 7th, uh, Broncos on the MAC. Um, they have submitted their permits, and that is an approved event at this time. Uh, that'll follow by July 13th, the Mustang Stampede. 
Uh, August 24th, the Corvette Crossroads. Uh, that'll follow with our annual bridge walk in September. Um, that, after that, one of our most uh, popular events, uh, glad to report it's returning. It's very large, very lengthy. Um, the Antique Tractor Parade. Um, the Owasso Tractor Club is the sponsor of that event. Um, that takes place on September 7th. And that also has been approved. Um, Another popular event, which is in September the following weekend, is the Truck Parade of Lights, which we're all familiar with. Um, glad to see that as a returning event, very popular. Uh, generates a lot of activity in the communities on both sides of the bridge. Um, and then the following weekend, we have the Mighty Mac ATV Crossing. Uh, quite popular, good participation. Um, and then we close out our season with an antique snowmobile crossing in December 14th. That's a smaller event that we've been running for some time. Um, so overall, um, I work with the visitors bureaus and the Chamber of Commerces in St. Agnes and Mackinac, uh, which organizes a lot of these events and we work closely with them. Um, and uh, they're very popular uh, and we, we work closely in, in determining the dates, uh, the time of day of these events, and uh, what time of that day, which is real important based on our traffic counts. As you guys know, we have very heavy traffic during the season. Uh, these events can affect traffic, so uh, we have a lot of requirements that we put in place for the direction, the time, uh, various things like that, which help us um, meet both our goals of, of continuing to move our tra public traffic and also accommodating these special events which are widely liked and enjoyed by many. Uh, that's all I had. Do you have any questions or concerns with special events for 24? Any questions from uh, the authority members in reference to the special events coming up? Well, I tell you, Mike, we certainly want to thank all the time and effort and the energy that you put into these events because the economic impact for both sides of the strait is absolutely huge for the two communities, and uh, they count on it. It helps the uh, economy a great deal. And you make it run real smooth. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay. the uh, Give me have a brief report on the... International Cable Supported Bridge Holders Conference? Yes. Um, something exciting for this year is the uh, this group, International Cable Supported Bridge Operators Association, is having their international conference at West Point. And um, Cole and Matthew and I will be attending in October this wonderful conference. And um, we've gotten approval from the director to use federal training funds for this. So um, we're just going through that process, uh, getting the paperwork done before we get ready to go. Um, you'll see in your packet there, I included some pictures of, of other members of this group. And these are obviously cable supported bridges from all over the world. And these can be either cable stay bridges or suspension bridges like ours. And you'll recognize some of those um, bridges. Um, it's just fabulous to get to a conference where that's all, it's all about bridges like us. And so one of the wonderful things about this conference is they have a portion that is open to um, operators, consultants, and um, contractors, all kinds of things where they have a wonderful um, place where you can look at different um, technology and that. But then towards the end of the conference, they have a owners only section workshop and so we'll be in there without the consultants and without the contractors just talking about the issues that we have and so it's wonderful to have um, these people there and and get their expertise and their their best practices um, there's a little short video here that we hope will play nicely to present the conference get us excited about going melissa if you'll play that Hopefully. We travel to New York State's beautiful Hudson Valley to the origins of the International Cable Supported Bridge Operators Association, also known as ISBOA, as we look forward to the 2024 conference. The very first conference was held in 1991 in Poughkeepsie, New York at the Mid-Hudson Bridge. 
owned and operated by the New York State Bridge Authority. Then Chief Engineer Bill Moreau brought together suspension bridge operators from around the world to share concerns and expertise in an effort to extend the lives of their suspension bridges. My name is Bill Moreau. Um, I've been chief engineer from the New York State Bridge Authority between probably 1987 and 2014, 27 years, and uh, built a lot of stuff here. I got some, some world-class bridges over the Hudson River that were really a joy to tend to. The Ice Bowl Conference, um, you know, is kind of a legacy that, you know, uh, I'm thrilled to see is continuing, and I hope it's made a difference, you know, in a, in a lot of places around the world for a lot of people, you know. We're in the transportation business, moving people safe and, and uh, reliable, and that's what we do. The second conference occurred in 2000 at the Hotel Thayer at West Point, New York, focusing on the Bear Mountain Bridge, also owned and operated by the New York State Bridge Authority. And now, 24 years later, the conference will return to West Point and the nearby Bear Mountain Bridge, the first parallel cable suspension bridge, which will celebrate 100 years since its opening on Thanksgiving Day, 1924. The Bridge Authority is um, excited to host the 2024 Icebox Conference, which will be held down at uh, West Point. For us to host the 100th anniversary of the Bear Mountain Bridge and the conference at the same time is really exciting for us. And uh, we look forward to uh, having people from all over the world uh, join us at, at West Point. By having a group of engineers come together to share common practices and new, you know, learnings and new studies, I think is super important, uh, not only for the knowledge base that they create for universities and, and the public in general, but to agencies like mine that use their knowledge and new discoveries to maintain our bridges operating hopefully for a thousand years. So. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Good luck, and I know that uh, you'll bring back a lot of important information. Yeah, we'll Thank do you. a little report for you yes. when we get back. Great. Thank you very much. Okay, the uh, item 12 under the agenda here is the 2024 meeting schedule. You have the dates of July 9th and 10th and the 7th and 8th. Is there any objections? And everybody still have them on their calendars? Mr. Chair, a suggestion uh, that uh, while we're in two, suggesting that while we're in Sault Ste. Marie that uh, we attempt to get together with the uh, leadership of the International Bridge. And uh, that might make that visit. Uh, yes. Give us some more focal points. It was always very successful in the past when we had the joint meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, any further discussion on it? Okay. We'll move right down to, is there any other business to come before the authority that uh, members wish to bring up? Any other business? Hearing none, anyone from the public wishing to have comment. Anyone from the public wishing to have comment? Third and final call. A motion would be in order to adjourn. I'll make a motion, Mr. Chairman, to adjourn. I did not go on. I'll make a motion, Mr. Chairman, to adjourn. Support. It's been moved and supported uh, to adjourn the meeting. <laughs> At 11 16. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much.